Hello friends, I'm David, also known as the Bird Listener. Today I'm going to show you how to make an investment in toys that then turns into a real bargain. But first, I want to talk to you about cigars. No, not really. The cigar boxes, though, are very important to me because over the years when you have big birds, you accumulate stuff. All kinds of hooks, connectors, chains, bowls, bowl holders, perches, you name it. At one point I had a full walk-in closet that was full of nothing but bird materials and all the support stuff that I needed for my guys. But these boxes here, Kate was working with some boxes for a while and I talked her out of some. And what I do is I store the little pieces and parts that I need to work on bird toys in here. For example, a lot of people call these carabiners, I just call them C-clips, but as you can see I've got quite a few of them and they're invaluable when you're hanging toys in a bird cage. Of course depending on the size of your bird you can see that all these are pretty large, but I've got big birds so I need big hangers. Another one is my chains. Chains are essential. When you're breaking down an existing toy, obviously you need to have something to put the pieces on as you take them off of the larger toy. So I've set some aside already here that I'm going to be using today. But as you can see, I've got quite a few chains of various sizes, depending on the size of the toy, the hole that's down through the middle of whatever it is I'm putting on there. On occasion, I have had to drill some holes either to make them larger or if they didn't have any in them at all. I really don't do that a whole lot anymore, but in years past that was, I had a drill press that I could take and you know, put holes through like alphabet blocks and things of that sort pretty easily so that I could then string them on a chain and turn them into toys for my birds. And lastly, here is another sort of a connector box. Now this one is the larger connectors where you want to hang something from something else. You know, you you need to hang your toy from the roof or ceiling of the cage, things of that sort. Obviously you also need lots of washers. Every time you're putting something on the cage, you generally need to have a washer on either side of the bars so that the bolt or whatever it is you're putting through there will hold. And then also some small rings. Now these rings are invaluable whenever you're doing toys because obviously you need to put something on the end of each chain, both ends, to stop the pieces from falling off. And again, I've set some aside that I'll be using today. But again, these come in all sizes. Some of them are kind of like keychain rings where you can prime apart and work the thing around. Others are solid, but they're not welded together. So they can be separated like with two pairs of pliers or a couple of screwdrivers. You can get them out of alignment a little bit, put what you want to on there, and then just kind of squeeze them back together. Some, uh, I find, they are really welded. Uh, those are kind of what I use as intermediate connectors between one connector and another because those it's pretty hard to get anything on there unless it's a clip type thing. So, that all that said, the first thing I want to show you is the toys that I did buy at the Bird Expo that Kate and I went to yesterday. Uh, it was a small, small outfit. It wasn't really a very big one. The room was kind of small. We were hoping to find some, some large toys and also some different kinds of bird food for the big guys. When you have big macaws, obviously you have big food. And one of the toughest things to find at retail is a fairly priced, what I'll call a base food for your birds. Just something that, if you fed it all by itself, it would be adequate. But we certainly don't do that. We're always adding extras to our bird base. But there's times I, I really do feel that our birds eat better than we do at least more healthy. But yesterday at the Bird Expo, actually I only invested in three or four toys. They just didn't have that many there that were appropriate for big macaws. But one of the ones that I did find was this. Now this toy 
as you can see, it's fairly good size. Theoretically, I could hang it in the cage and just let the two birds mess with it and they'd probably tear it up. But, it will last a lot longer if I break it down into multiple toys. Now this particular toy, I can probably turn into seven, maybe eight individual toys that I can then hang in there. And when they've destroyed that, I can take it out and put another one in. This toy cost me about $25. And for me, that's a pretty fair price. And I'll show you a little more detail about that toy. I did a real short little intro about that, and I'll show you that right now. Well, this is one of the two toys that I bought yesterday that I intend to turn into several toys. The interesting thing about this toy is that it took just some solid wooden blocks, and then the toy maker cut these slots in them that I think will make them much more appealing to my big guys because whenever I use just regular like alphabet blocks they tend to work the corners off and the edges and then they lose interest in them. But these I believe they'll be able to kind of just keep on chipping away at and it should be a lot more fun for them. And I'll show you shortly how I'm going to break this down into multiple toys. Okay, welcome back. Here's the other toy that I bought yesterday. This was the biggie. I had to talk myself into this one. I wasn't really sure that I wanted to spend $50 on a bird toy. Now granted, if I went to a retail store and got one this big, it would probably be upwards of $80. So when you go to a bird fair or a bird expo, you pay much closer to the wholesale price because there's been so many of the middlemen taken out of the equation. I really enjoy going to bird fairs and bird expos. When I lived in Tallahassee, I was part of a very nice bird club there. I was even president of the outfit for a few years. And we used to put on two bird shows a year. Huge facility, probably 10,000 square feet. And we had vendors coming in from virtually all over the southeast and even further up the coast. This was in Tallahassee, Florida. We'd have a two-day fair. They'd come in and set up on a Friday night. As a club, we always uh, threw a big dinner for them. We'd bring in all kinds of dishes and things of that sort, and the vendors really appreciated that and very much liked to come to our shows because we treated them very nicely, and they, in turn, treated us very nicely. They came back, maybe, you know, year after year, and wonderful people. Uh, the folks that travel the, I guess what you could call bird toy circuit, are really a select breed of folks. They obviously love their birds, and they've turned that into a, a passion for whatever it is they do, whether it's they have caged birds for sale or other birds, or if they're just selling pieces and parts or cages or perches or any one of a hundred different things that you'll find at a really good bird fair. Now this toy though, here, and again I've got a little short that I'll show you about this one right now. This was my big purchase at the Toy Expo yesterday. This toy cost me fifty dollars and as you can see there's a lot of pieces and parts to it and a big solid piece of wood in the center this is very appropriate for large birds, macaws, even African greys and some larger Amazons, of course larger cockatoos, things of that sort. They'll provide a lot of chewing fun. Now these beads, at least with my guys, these beads don't last very long. They're wood and they'll pop those things in a heartbeat and they'll just, after that they're just gone. But this thickness of wood is pretty close to ideal for a large macaw. Much thicker than that and they just kind of get bored with it because they can't get enough pressure on it to really break it off. And any thinner, they just shatter it with one little bite. This thickness here, they've got to chew on for a while and it does seem to give them a great deal more fun over a longer period of time. And again, I'll be breaking this one down. As you can see, it's got chains. So it takes a little longer. It's a little bit harder, a little more steps. But I should be able to turn this into roughly 10 separate bird toys for $50. Not a bad day. I'll be back to show you how to do it. So all things considered, this toy, by the time I'm done with it, I'll have roughly 10 toys out of this. And each one of them will be like this. There will be one strand 
of that. And I will be able to get 10 toys out of this $50, which when you think about it, you turn it into a $5 toy that they can you can leave in there that this would this may last a few days it might last a month you never know with big birds what they're going to do with new things that you put in their cage oftentimes Kareem and Bravo will just tear into something new Gandhi he's a bit more standoffish but sooner or later he'll cozy up to it on other occasions I've put toys in there that I thought they were just going to rip into and they didn't touch them for a week two weeks a month and then finally, they might start playing with it. There were some toys in that closet that I mentioned, for example, that they never messed with. And I had spent quite a bit of money for some of those toys, and they were just totally ignored. Never paid a bit of attention to them. It was just, I might as well have just gone and thrown my money in the river. But this one here will end up making about 10 toys. I really do think they'll go after these because, as I said in my little introductory piece about this one, these pieces of wood, for a macaw anyway, are just about perfect. They can shred this. They can, you know, bite flakes off of it. They do that really easy with their, with their lower beak. They'll pop the beads on here and nothing flat. But this should give them days and days worth of fun. And I'll have 10 of these out of a $50 toy. Now I'm going to get down to actually breaking one of these down for you. And I'm going to do this one here first. I'm not going to bore you with all of the preparation for breaking this down, so I'm going to go ahead and separate these pieces, and I'll have them all laid out here whenever I bring you back, and I'll just real quickly kind of go over how to reassemble these into a useful toy that your birds will really enjoy. While I was away, I did the dismantling of the first toy that I wanted to show you tonight. But I also wanted to show you what the toy maker actually starts with to put this together. First of all there were these small pieces of wood that my guys will destroy in a heartbeat. But I'll put one of these on some of the toys just as an extra little something that they can tear up. But one of the fascinating things that I found was that what I thought was rope or sisal turned out to be paper. Now this was incredibly clever. This toy maker takes a strip of paper and then winds it up tightly and that's what he threads through the pieces of the toy such as this. I thought that was pretty neat because now this being non-toxic it's just like package wrapping paper. The birds will tear this up as well. Now this I'm going to put into a separate toy. But I've actually got a bonus now out of what I got because I will put the pieces and parts that I've taken off of this and put them on a chain. But I'm going to find some other use for these pieces of paper that will then actively stimulate the birds and have them chewing. Birds love paper. I mean, back in the day, <laughs> I would take a telephone book and just put it on top of their flat top cage. And they would take great joy in just ripping the pages out of that phone book. Of course, it made an enormous mess in the bird room, but if you've got big birds, you're going to have big messes. That's all there is to it. But they would just have a great time just ripping the pages out of that phone book. Every now and then, I'd have to go in and just kind of cut out the scraps so that they could get to the good pages underneath. But a, a good telephone book would last them for a month or more. And they would be at it all the time. If they were just up there, they'd one or the other of them would go over there and just start ripping it up. And pretty soon the other one goes over and they'd spend 10, 15 minutes just ripping pages out of the phone book and dropping them off the edge of the cage. That was, <laughs> that's one of Kareem's favorite things. He loves to take toys, throw them off his cage. Because then I would say, uh oh, dropped it. And he would turn around and say, uh oh, so... <laughs> It became a regular thing. He would throw them off just to hear me say that. But I thought this was really cool. So, now, got that. So we'll put this out of the way. These are the things that the maker used. This is the chain and those pieces of wood. To put a new toy together, I just took a short piece of chain. I put a ring on one end. 
and then I'm putting these blocks on this chain. Now, I also dug out some other things I've got. I'm going to use one of these too, just as kind of a spacer. But I also have these. Now, these are hard plastic little novelty rings. Uh, you see a lot of things like this at, at toy fairs and, and bird expos and things of that sort. <laughs> these things are tough. I mean, they're, they're kind of like brass knuckles. They're almost indestructible. So I'll put one of those on there. And they'll fiddle with this. They'll play with this. And it's just another bit of enjoyment that they can get out of this toy. So as I'm going along here, I just put another piece on and then the other piece on. And I was wrong about my toy count, by the way, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I thought that I would be using just probably three of these blocks, but I think four just makes a better toy. So instead of ten, I'm only going to get nine. But when you throw in that I'm going to make a toy out of the paper that they used as the change to put these on, I still get ten toys. Now, I've got this one, and I'll probably just take a small... I have one right here. There we go. Just a small carabiner. Put that on there. And I now have a bird toy. I can just take it and hang that from inside their cage, either on the side or from the top. And they'll have something to play with that will give them probably several days worth of amusement. So out of this batch here, I'll make about nine toys. And that should last them for a good long time. The point of making toys, by the way, is for them to destroy them. One of the things that I used to do at the bird fairs, would I, I would go around and talk to all the vendors and things of that sort. And I'll never forget this one day that I was talking to a vendor who was a very good toy maker. And this guy comes up and he kind of starts looking at toys and we just kind of start chatting. And he turned to me and he said, you know, I don't know why I buy these toys for my birds. All they do is tear them up. And I looked at him and I said, that's the point. <laughs> so somehow or other, I guess he thought they were just supposed to sit there and look at these toys and not tear them up. So I said, well, you're doing exactly the right thing. You know, put the toys in there, let them tear them up. Whenever they get bored with them or they've destroyed everything, then you put more in. And it's, it's just one of the joys of having big birds. You do have to resupply their toys. Remember, you're keeping these guys in cages. And it's a boring, boring environment. You've got to put something in there that provides them with some amusement, some entertainment, something to do. These guys are chewers. They chew the bark off trees out in the wild. My guys can make toothpicks out of two-by-fours. They'll have these things shredded into just little bits within no time at all. So the point of having toys in your bird's cage is for them to destroy them. I think that's about it for this trip. I've got one other toy that I want to work on, and I'll probably put that one uh, up here next. Hello again. Thanks for coming back. You didn't know I left, but I did. This is the big toy that I bought the other day. Now, I've already broken down most of it and turned it into toys, but I wanted to show you at least once how I do it. Now obviously I've got a chain on either side of this large block of wood. I have two choices. One is to pry apart the ring on the ends, take all the blocks off, restring them, put the ring back on, all that stuff. Or I can use my secret weapon. Bolt cutters. <laughs> they come in very handy sometimes. So, I'm just going to clip this and then we'll press on. There we go. That ought to do it. That ought to do it. I can now find where I broke it. Oh, there it is. Okay. 
Now one word of advice, the uh, links that come off of this, the little scraps, make sure you account for those and throw them away. Um, something like this would be fatal to a bird if they ingested it. And probably to my dog or cat too. So, in any case, just be careful with what, what you create as scraps. So, last step on this is to simply take the bits that I've got here now and put a hanger on it that doesn't seem to want to fit. Fit before, what's going on? <laughs> Well, this is embarrassing. It appears that I have the wrong size hangers. What did I do with those? Maybe this one will work. Probably not. Tell you what, having, having hangers for these ends up being one of the major things that you need in terms of accessories. There we go. And the other one I'll just but there you go. So now, out of $75 that I invested in toys, I've now created, well, at least 15, maybe 20 toys that they can use that will certainly last them a lot longer than two toys would have lasted them. And they'll provide them a lot of fun along the way. Oh, one other thing I did want to tell you. I forgot, almost forgot. This big old block of wood seems like it would just be a piece of trash now, doesn't it? However, it occurred to me that the pieces of paper that were used on the other toy that I tore apart would probably fit through the holes on this. So, I've decided to take these pieces of paper and essentially string them through these holes and that will create yet another toy that they can shred, tear apart, play with and they may well go after some of the wood too. They, uh, they can surprise you sometimes and they'll, like I've said, I, my macaws don't typically go after wood this thick. But they will mess with it. They'll, you know, go after the edges of it and, and the, the ends and shred that a little bit. But after a while, they just kind of seem to get bored with it. But if I put these <clears throat> pieces of thread or the paper through it, now I'll actually pull this back about halfway, like so. And then I'll put a knot here and a knot here so that it won't come out. And they'll be able to pick at it from both sides. Shortens it up a little bit, but that's okay. I got room. But anyway, so this is a bonus toy that I got out of the deal. I didn't really expect to get this one. It just kind of dawned on me that it would be a shame to throw away these very interesting paper ropes that at least one toy maker has adapted to use to hang his toys off of, which I thought was a very good idea. Very safe for the birds. Very environmentally conscious too, everything else, so it was good to find, so I'm glad I got this out of it too. I want to thank you for tuning in. I do appreciate it very much. My videos are intermittent, that's the best I can say. I, I only make one whenever I really kind of get the urge or feel like there's something I want to say. Getting these toys reminded me that this is why we have birds and this is why we give them toys. They are our companions. It is up to us to provide for them in every way. They need our care and attention and good veterinary care, the right food, a stimulating environment, things to play with. They need contact with us. They're not self-sufficient. Out in the wild, yes, they are, because they have an entire flock. But once we bring them into our homes, 
and we take them into our flock, then we kind of become the leaders of the pack, so to speak, and it's really up to us to make sure that we provide the right kind of environment in life for these gentle giants that are going to outlive me by decades, probably. So for a while I've got them, I will enjoy them with every bit of myself that I can. I try to provide for them as best I can, give them the best food. I'm a little lazy about toys sometimes, I have to admit, because buying them retail is just outrageous. So having a bird fair come along has really given me the opportunity to lay in some more toys so that I can give these guys something to play with. But we love our birds. Both Wonder Whippy Kate and I are devoted to our three. We spend a lot of time and a lot of effort, but they're well worth it. So, thanks again for coming by. I appreciate it. Remember, I'm David, the bird listener. If you would, please like this video. I don't do many, but the ones I do, I do from the heart. Thanks again for coming by. See you again soon. Bye-bye.